Papa Squat! Coming at ya! Uh, this is a different video. This is completely not what I normally react to, but I think it is a super awesome thing to uh, look at and talk about, and so that's why I'm doing this video. I'm still going to do a video later today that's an actual uh, hip-hop rap, some kind of song. Actually, I think today I'm not doing what is uh, actually a hip-hop or rap song. It's a different genre, but uh, I think it is actually a hip-hop song. Anyway, this thing here that I want to listen to is actually about uh, music, music production, musicians, uh, and how, I mean, how freaking amazing they are or can be. And I, I want to call attention to this video because I think it's incredible. Uh, it, I just, it came across my desk yesterday, uh, probably on Facebook, uh, and it was just some random thing, and I was like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. I clicked through and ended up watching the whole 20-minute video. I'm going to link to the whole video so that if you want to watch the whole thing, you can, because really what I'm interested in for the most part is the first half of this video. Uh, this is a, a drummer, musician uh, named Larnell Lewis. And, uh, man, he is amazing. I was a drummer in high school. I was not a very good drummer. Uh, I, I know how to drum. I never really got to use a, a drum set uh, all that much. I was, like, in marching band and concert band and things like that. I did use a drum set a little bit, but, man, um, it is not... I, I clearly, from watching this video... I did not have the right mindset, because as we watch this, we'll see how he is thinking and what he's doing. So let's jump into this. Uh, I'm going to let this play quite a bit, because he has some really interesting things to say. Um, and this is him who is not familiar with this music at all, so that also appeals to me, um, listening to Enter Sandman from Metallica. And he's never heard the song before. It's not the normal sort of music that he listens to. And to see his mind work through the song and figure it out. And then, in the second half of the video, he plays the song uh, on the drum set as the track is running. And it is absolutely incredible. But let's let's give a, a watch to this first half of the video and he'll introduce it and I'll stop and talk and call out some things that I think are really uh, incredible but but it's worth watching this and it's worth watching hopefully the video I'm making but it's 100% worth watching the video uh, that I'm playing so you should totally go watch it because it is incredible so let's let's listen to what he has to say hey everyone the last time I was at Drumeo Dave had me play a fusion tune that I had never... Sorry, Drumeo is this website. So it's about drummers and drumming and blah, blah, blah. Um, this guy just has the greatest, like, weirdly calm energy for a drummer. Drummers are generally considered to be, like, madmen and crazy. And uh, this guy is just... He's a pleasure to watch. ...ever heard before, which was a ton of fun. <laughs> So, in the bottom there, it said, Larnell Lewis listens, uh, hears a song once and plays it perfectly. So that sets up what we're going to expect here. This is his drum set. We can see he's got a, some toms over on the left, or on the right. He's got uh, maybe a couple of snares or a couple more toms. Oh, snares over there on the left. Um, and a bunch of cymbals. What have I got? Five, six, seven, eight different cymbals, two kick drums, uh, and uh, it looks like off to the very far left, uh, way over there, uh, there's a little bit of a synthesizer or soundboard or something coming through. I'm not sure if that's just uh, for recording or, or something else, but let's, uh, let's keep going. So we wanted to find something similar only this time. I wanted to play a style I am not known for playing, metal. So to do this, Dave has challenged me with what he says is one of the most popular metal songs of all time, 
that I actually haven't heard before. Sorry, guys. Um, it's interesting. It's so funny because this guy, clearly from watching this video just yesterday, he is a musician. He he knows his stuff, and the fact that he hasn't heard a song that was so incredibly popular and still is popular it's a really a fantastic song and i actually hadn't heard it in years and years and years and, and watching it yesterday just reminded me like how incredible the song is uh so let's keep going sandman by metallica and i know what you are thinking there's no way i haven't heard the song before but i'm not lying when i say i've never heard or played this tune in my life so <laughs> I'm gonna take a listen, and I'm gonna give it a try. Are you ready? Because I'm not. But either way, here we go. Okay, so I wanna repeat that. He's gonna listen to this song once, and then attempt to play it. Um, what's, actually, I just thought of this. What's funny is my, my mom's dad, so my grandfather, um, I never got to experience this, but she tells me often and told me over the course of my life that he was one of those people who could hear a song or you could hum him a song and he could sit down at the piano and play it perfectly and even improve on it, like riff on it, do things. And it was just absolutely incredible. So he had that sort of mind. I wish I had that. And maybe I do for something. I just haven't found it yet. Uh, this guy clearly has it for, for drumming. Uh, so let's keep going. I'll take more volume. Okay. I'm assuming it's one, two, three, four. A little more volume. Okay. Got some so the thing I find super interesting, he's sitting at the drum set, and you can see his brain working immediately and you can see his eyes m looking to different parts of the room probably different parts just in his head different parts of the drum set and he and it becomes super clear as we keep watching that he is not only counting to to find the beat of the music and to maintain it because that is number one the thing the drummer needs to do is set the 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 the, the speed the pace uh, at the beat of the song, but you can see him mapping out what he needs to be doing as he's playing. So keep in mind, he's basically memorizing, and maybe not even memorizing, but he is absorbing this information so that he just knows it, like he knows the song, and, and, and it's incredible to see his brain work. Some aggressive toms going on. I'm glad I got two, uh, a tom and a half. <laughs> and he said aggressive toms going on, and he points he's got or he's got a tom and a half. Um, but keep in mind, he's not just listening to the guitar and the bass. He's listening to the drum, most importantly, because that's what he has to play. And he's paid attention that not only is the are the bass drums going the toms are going it, like he's he's noting all of this there was an upbeat on that crash before upbeat okay see how he moved his head probably again okay see Two shots he's already three. predicting right uh, with the snare okay no other shots all right Build. Push. Push, build. These are terms I don't Big know. Right, the push. Still open high hats, okay. So he comes in as the singer right here, and really, that doesn't matter at all. Uh, to, to Lewis here as he's listening. The the singer is texture to him because all he's really concerned about is maintaining the beat, hitting everything, and making sure that the drums work with what's going on. And again, you can see he's absolutely absorbing all of this and mapping out 
what he needs to be hitting. Now, keep in mind, I've been interrupting, of course. He's listening to this a single time, and he's already able to predict what's going to be coming up next. Not just because he's a good drummer, but because he's a good enough musician that he understands how the different phrasings work in a song and how certain phrases are repeated and then repeated and changed and then repeated again and then maybe double repeated and you'll see he calls out these things that we don't as casual music listeners and I absolutely consider myself a casual music listener we don't even think of and so when you hear a song uh, or when I hear a song and I'm listening I'm reacting to it and I say things about how it's produced and why they made this choice they think about all of these things and if it's done well done right done in a way that is aesthetically pleasing the song is then really good it becomes popular and is recognized as being a, a good song and i think this choice of enter sandman is a really fantastic one Wow. Look at, look at, look at how surprised he is by that. So this is somebody who is not familiar with metal music, and I, I can only assume he was expecting one, two, three, four, one, two, no real artistry. And so when he hears them shift to a halftime, uh, a very different beat than what was going before, you saw his eyes light up, and he was like, oh, okay, I see something cool is going on here. Um, and to us, as people just listening to the song, we go, oh, that's cool. Like, that's really neat. But you can see him get re-engaged. And we stay in that new key. Okay, I guess it's a free chorus. Free chorus, I don't know. But he does, even though it doesn't matter that he is listening to something in a different key, he notes it. Drums don't have keys. Like, they certainly, you know, the different cymbal sizes have different kind of notes that they will be hitting. Um, but it's more about the sound. You're not really, you're not tuning a, a, a cymbal, really. Or you do tune a drum to make sure it's, it's tight enough to, to give you the sound you want. But it's very different. Like, he's not going to adjust his drums to, a, to account for a different key that the singer is in. But he notes it because he's a really amazing musician. Wow. Oh. See? Okay. So it's a and then there's another change where they drop everything out, and his reaction was, oh, okay, th that's unique. That's really cool and different. Shorter chorus. And go back to the main theme. Wow. And you can tell how amazed he is by this. Sounds like double around the interlude. Don't know what that means. See, predicting. So this musical phrase has already happened previously, and he already knows what's going to be going on. And you can see now his eyes have opened up a little bit, and he's kind of really paying attention, not in sort of that active listening mode that he's absolutely in, but even more engaged because he can hear this change that's coming. I'm going to back up just a couple of seconds here. Uh, there we go. See? Okay, right. If you're listening to the song, did you even hear in the first phrase where those cymbal hits were coming in? And he already has that in his brain and is able to predict it. And it's incredible to see. Then, right. Grab the cymbal to, okay. to end the note. Okay, then we go into guitar solo. Uh, 
uh, you'll notice he is constantly moving doing this or his shoulders or whatever and if you watch my videos I do the exact same thing and it's because I had any amount of training as a drummer in my grade school junior high middle school high school years it, it just is part of you you just find the beat and you are able and you're able to not find the beat you like it's really um it's something that i just do because uh that's what i hear in a song is where the beat is and how they're doing that um he is absolutely on orders of magnitude more talented and skilled than i am at drumming but you can see that thought process going on <laughs> Killing. Right. The halftime will get you. See, he knew the halftime was coming. Mapping everything out. And even how he moves. Oh, interesting. Even how he moves. He's probably not even aware of it, but certain moves that he makes, like with his head or his shoulder or, you know, his torso and his hands, he's not just predicting, but he's basically, uh, you know, getting the very beginnings of some muscle memory involved to like, okay, this is that, this is that, and I'm totally fascinated by this. Oh, okay, third time around in that shot, I gotta go leave some silence and go to Tom's. Did you know it was the third time around? Alright, always on the up crashes, okay. Crashes are around the vocal. In your closet, in your hands. Down bass. See more of the muscle memory. Right, so bass drum first before the up crash. Right. Oh. Double chorus, even though it's shortened. Okay. So you saw he was going to grab that cymbal because he thought it was going to end. Like, on that symbol, but they did a, like he said, a double chorus, and so there's not that symbol break, um, and instead he has to remember now, after the third time through that one musical phrase, there's a double of that chorus, and it's a very short chorus, but he knew that, like he, he was surprised by it, because what he expected was something very standard, and Metallica switched it up on him and gave him a double chorus, and so then he has to map that in his head and remember it, and holy crap. Right. And then we're gonna... I'm gonna miss that. Yep, that's a tough one. So he said he was gonna miss that because there's that short little drum break. Like, there's no drums, and then it's not on a one, it's on an and, or a e, or, or a uh. uh one e and a two e and a three e and a, that's how you count in music. Uh, it is not a standard point at least I don't think so I wasn't I, I, <laughs> I am not as good as him uh, but it is a difficult spot to hit because it just kind of comes out of nowhere he's liking the drums and so listen to all the different drumstick hits going on here and he's he knows where he needs to be. Okay, so that's the first half of the video, or first 
uh, almost half, um, maybe first third. So now he's going to talk about the song, do some things, kind of absorb it and really process it and get it into more of a longer term memory. And then he's going to play. Um, I'll, I'll go through this next part where he kind of talks about things and I'll, I'll play some of the video, but I really encourage you to go watch it because I don't want to just repeat the whole thing. And I think they deserve to have as many hits on this as possible because it's incredible. Uh, so let's listen to what he has to say now about that song. Oh, we're going to get an ad here. So I'll pause that. Join today's military. Join Darren as he runs for some kind... Oh, no, it's an ad. All right, so let's uh, turn the sound back on here. <sighs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to take a quick review here. So I know... That okay. Try right now to remember how the song starts and 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 what the phrases are like. Song just ended. He's listened to the whole thing, and now he's going to basically replay the whole thing in his head and start saying, singing, performing some of the musical phrases. But how does the song start? Like, try to think right now. Let's pause for a second. Okay, now, if you couldn't remember, I completely understand, but let's see what he has to say. That there was some hi-hats in the beginning on the... I'm assuming that was maybe twice around. That feels like a good length, but I can't remember. Doesn't know exactly. Um, after we do that twice, I'm assuming that we go back to the toms, or we go to the toms, make it feel big. I think it was just like a quarter note bass drum, I think it was happening on the kick. It was something like that. Uh, we were hanging out there, and then there was some kind of a cue. Maybe it was a drum fill, which means it's on me to play. Something was happening, and then we got into that other section. We're just, we're just open hi-hat. So it's probably even all the way around, if we're thinking song form. And so, okay, that, that's important too. So it's interesting because he's talking about things that he he doesn't really remember, he kind of remembers, it's all in there. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to have to kind of make it up and, you know, go with it. And then uh, he will have the music playing. I don't think he's hearing the drum track, he's hearing the rest of it. I'm not 100% sure, they don't really tell us that. Um, but it's amazing that he doesn't, he, it's not a photographic memory or a phonographic memory. He knows how music is made. He knows how it's put together. He's using terms that I don't know, uh, but that's fine. I'm not a musician. It means something to him, and I'm sure to other musicians. And that knowledge is what's going to allow him to then play this song. This section, we're just... We're just open hi hat, so it's probably even all the way around. Don't know what that if means. If we're thinking song form and something that feels comfortable to listen to. Okay, so that is one of the most interesting things he says. If we're thinking song form and what is most comfortable to listen to, so that's the sort of stuff that musicians have to think about, and producers have to think about to put together to make a song that you want to listen to, that is pleasant to listen to. Uh, some people would probably say that metal is not pleasant to listen to, but they're wrong. Uh, any music can be pleasant to listen to if it's put together in a way that is appealing and, uh, I mean, honestly, just remarkable. Just, uh, you can hear it and go, yeah, that's a good song. And 100% and Enter Sandman is a good song. I don't care what sort of music you listen to, whether it's classical or folk or rap or anything and then when we get into the verse we're rocking and the theme in terms of uh being able to hit those up shots what i was hearing was slamming on the bass drum not slamming but hitting the bass drum on the downbeat in order 
what's the difference between slamming and hitting? That, that, even that, like he says, slamming on the bass drum. Slamming is too hard of a word. And in his mind, he needs to make sure that he's telling himself, not just us, but telling him, it's probably more important that he's telling himself that, okay, I have to have a, a powerful bass, but not over the top, not like at the edge of, of too loud, just strong. But to catch any ups, right? Uh, the one. He also. Uh, one what tricky thing? He also talks about hitting the upbeats, and I think that's like on the snare, or, or uh, rather the. Whoops, sorry, kitten. Uh, on the cymbals uh, to, to hit an upbeat, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Or at least thing that caught me off guard was the halftime. I didn't expect that. I yeah. didn't expect the halftime, and I think it probably happens three times, if I remember correctly. And then out of that halftime, somehow, which I can't remember at the moment, we go <laughs> back and we go to the chorus. Uh, we go to the chorus. It sounds like... Dun, 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 Again, mm, did you remember that? Dun, I mean, you know the song. Got it memorized. we go to that interlude twice, right? Let me know in the comments. How am I doing? <laughs> okay. Um, and of course, we go to the verse. We do the chorus. Similar thing. Um, we go... I think we go into a guitar solo at that point. Mm -hmm. And then we do the modulation. I think we do the halftime. I can't remember the halftime. It was twice. There was something about the form at that part. Once we got past the guitar solo... I feel like there was an interlude where there was speaking and some crash hits at some point. I can't remember if it was a chorus and then that interlude, or if it was the interlude and then we went to a couple of choruses. And so the fact that he doesn't remember exactly, it, for one thing, is amazing, again, because you would think when you watch him play, he, he has it memorized. But he knows the form of music, and he knows how to perform on the drums, and he just has to know kind of the general phrasing. And as the song is going along, he's going to be projecting ahead to what's next and what, basically what makes the most sense to him after having heard the song and with, with all the skill he has as a performer to be able to play this song having never heard it except this one time. Uh, what do you think? Should I listen again or should I just hop on it and see what happens? <laughs> Let me uh, phone a friend. Um, okay. So he talks to his friend, and it's, I think it's the guy in the production booth, and they just say, let's just go for it. So uh, I'm only going to watch a little bit of this, uh, and really the first part is what I wanted to talk about and to show, uh, in case you're not familiar with how music is put together and how musicians think about music, especially if they're <laughs> incredibly good musicians, what they think about in order to make their music which really they make for themselves but to entertain us and uh it's absolutely art it, and it's absolutely something that takes talent skill training time or some weird genetic birth thing that just you know music Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah, so if you listen now, we're not hearing the drum track. Um, there, whatever room they're in, I'm sure, is a, some sort of uh, music recording studio, and they have deleted the drum track and are playing everything else. So he is the drum track. So we don't really know for certain if he's hitting everything correctly because we are not hearing the, the correct drum track, but it's right. The most amazing thing to me is not that he's getting the toms, which are the, you can see him hitting with the drumsticks there, 
but he's got both bass drums going. Can't really see the, the foot on the left so much, but he's got both bass drums going, and it sounds correct. Why do they have to do that? Dwarven Forge! See, I'm a geek. I get ads for uh, geeky stuff. Alright, let's play again. So the beat is just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Very, very simple. It is not super uh, aggressive speed or anything like that. It's a very comfortable pace to this song. So that's that half uh, speed that he was talking about, and he just, remember how surprised he, oh, goes right into it, not even a moment's hesitation of like, oh, I was supposed to hit over here, nothing, he's completely spot on. So, uh, I'm going to stop there, because I would watch this whole video again, uh, but I, I do uh, hope you go to watch it, because, it, I mean, he nails it! He nails it! It's it's disgusting how amazing uh, it is. Uh, I am absolutely blown away, because I, because I know enough about drums to, <laughs> to know, one, how difficult it is to sit down at a drum set and actually be able to play it well because there's a lot of things going on uh potentially there's a ton of things you could hit i see a cowbell there i see the drum heads themselves there's toms there's a snare there's bass or two bass drums there's what did i say eight different nine different cymbals of different sizes with different cutouts in them uh a double uh, hi-hat uh, that's one cymbal on top of the other in order to get that ch -ch 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 sound and they all make different sounds depending on where they're hit, how they're hit, how hard they're hit, um, how much they stand out in the middle of a song. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And not only can you hit the drums on their head, you can hit it so you also get the uh, rim. So it's the rim and the head that's making a noise, which also on a snare drum makes the uh, little wires on the bottom of the snare vibrate. So you still get kind of a snary, uh, uh, snary sound to it. Because um, that's basically what that is. There's kind of stri uh, uh, springs, not strings, springs on the bottom of a snare drum that you can tighten or loosen. And that's what gives the sound to a snare drum. That's why it's a snare. Um, otherwise, it would just be a tom or a drum of some kind. Um, absolutely incredible. It's so fun to watch. Uh, certainly, as somebody who has at least a little bit of background in drumming, I am just speechless to watch this guy do what he does, because I it's just amazing. It's just absolutely incredible. I can't, I, it's so cool to watch. So obviously, I like this a lot, and I wanted to talk about it here on the channel because it gets into uh, one of the big reasons why I react to the music that I do, because I am unfamiliar with it, but 
there's so much from one genre of music to another that is the same. It's just a matter of how you apply the lessons that you've learned and how you put the pieces together. Uh, I really want to find more by this guy and see what his normal type of music is. I, I assume it's more of like a maybe a jazz uh, type of musician. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look him up. Um, but yeah, go check this video out. I'll put the link in the comments, uh, not in the comments, in the uh, description. And uh, please go watch it. Uh, even if you just watch him finish off the song, uh, he plays it through and it sounds really good and it, it, it continues to amaze me just how he does it. So hey, uh, that's it for right now. I'm going to have another video, like I said, later today that's going to be uh, an actual song that I'm reacting to as opposed to this video. But I thought this was worth watching. I hope you watch the whole thing. Uh, Pop Squat. Check it out. Please like, subscribe, and share. I don't do these sorts of videos often. Uh, I think I've only done one other. And um, it was about uh, production. Um... Uh, this is sort of how songs are produced, uh, and it used examples from Lindsey Buckingham and uh, Fleetwood Mac um, from a year, year and a half ago. So it was quite a while ago. Uh, thanks very much. Talk to you soon.